This is a Shields of Shame exclusive. 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 Okay, so you're just not going to cooperate at all? Playing hard to get along with right now. Uh, and the fun part is the governor will be here in about 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep this up here. <laughs> I didn't have anything to hide. I'll give you a hint. Now would be the time. Because it was impossible, sir. Well, it's my cologne or something. My mouthwash, my cologne or something. But they're saying I smell you from here. And I'm like, y'all don't smell them, them drinks from several hours ago. Y'all don't. Well, let's tell the truth. Honesty's the best policy, right? But because I know that. With the way they were saying I reeked of alcohol, I knew that it was not alcohol that they were smelling. Because I had two drinks hours before coming to work. It could not have been. It just, don't, it just doesn't affect your career as a DPS employee. It will affect your career amongst anywhere in the United States. Today is Monday, February 28, 2022. The time now is 9.29 a.m. This interview is in reference to IA-0017-2022. Uh, my name is Sergeant First Class Todd Henson with the Office of Professional Standards. I'll be conducting an interview. Also present from OPS is Corporal Allen Gordon. And the DPS employee being interviewed this morning is uh, Sergeant First Class Logan Gass, currently assigned to Matt Hawks. North. North. Yes, sir. Um, Sergeant Gass, you're being interviewed as a witness to this investigation. You're not the subject of the investigation. Uh, we're just going to ask you questions relating to your involvement on Thursday. Um, February the 24th um, regarding a DPS employee that showed up to the mansion and uh, people around him detected an over alcoholic beverage is that, and you responded or called. Yes, sir. That correct? Um, before we get started, though, I just want to uh, give you the ear to warning. Uh, you've had an opportunity to read it. Um, do you have any questions about it? No, sir. You can just go ahead and sign up for me. Uh, you do understand this is an administrative investigation, it's not a criminal investigation. Uh, and just to make you aware that the uh, interview is being audio, today's 28. Uh, the interview is being audio and video recorded, okay? Yes, sir. Any questions before we get started? Yes, sir. All right. Um, so just tell me briefly uh, where you're assigned um, and kind of, you know, training that you've had, uh, DUI. Just give me a brief description. I'm currently the post commander of the North Office North Unit in Atlanta. Um, of course, I've got the normal standardized field sobriety um, training when we get in trooper school. I've also been through A ride, advanced roadside impaired driving enforcement. Um, and I've been through the drug recognition expert school as well. So you're a DRE? Yes. Well, not currently. My, uh, it's expired, but I've been through the school. I guess. Uh, when did it expire? How long? Uh, July of 2018, I believe. Okay. Um, so just tell me now how, how you got involved uh, on Thursday, February 24th. I was on the way into work. Um, our shift typically starts at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Um, and it was around that time, maybe just before or after, I don't remember the exact time. I was close to the Cobb County line when I got the phone call. I had been on the phone with uh, Lieutenant Custer and um, I had two missed calls in the radio room while I was on the phone with him. So I called them back. They said they got a call to Sergeant Yates, um, so I called him and he, he told me that um, he had got a phone call um, that there was a trooper that had showed up to the mansion who they had believed had been drinking and wanted either him or I uh, to, to go down there and investigate. Um, my understanding was at that point that uh, Captain Fearman had already been contacted and that had specifically requested us to come down there. And when you arrived, who, who did you speak with? Um, Trooper Hargett uh, was escorted to me, and then I believe it was is it Sergeant Lundy. Uh, they walked up to my patrol car. What did, did they say anything? I don't recall what exactly was said to begin with. Um, he had obviously spoken to them about what was going on, and they believed him in drinking. Um, so I just I had him step in front of my patrol car with the, the camera on, and before I started talking to him. What did you observe? Immediately, I mean, getting close to him, I mean, even as close as you and I are, you could smell alcohol on him. Um, and of course, as I spoke to him, you could smell it on his breath. Um, his eyes were more watery and bloodshot. Um, outside of that, I, I just asked him the typical questions that I normally would during a DUI investigation um, about consuming alcohol and then, you know, preliminary questions, medical related questions prior to beginning field sobriety. Um, he denied having 
anything to drink. I, I think he said it had been a week or two since he had anything. Um, but he was, outside of that, he was, I, I took his demeanor as, you know, evasive, really, when I was asking him questions. Um, it was like he was trying to develop an answer for every medical-related question I had. Um, and then ultimately he, he, like I said, he denied drinking and didn't want to uh, take any field sobriety tests at all. I, when he denied it, he just flat out say, how did he deny it? He, I don't remember his exact words, but he told me he hadn't been drinking. And then when I asked him, you know, when the last time he had been drinking, it, had, it was a significant amount of time, like a week or two prior. So he, he didn't admit that having any drink prior to... No, not, not anything that day at all. And he said at least probably two or three weeks prior for he... I, it was, I think it was a week or two. A week or two. Now, being on Nighthawks, obviously y'all especially with DUI, and y'all had the opportunity to arrest probably more DUI suspects than the average road trooper, or the, right. the normal road trooper. Um, based off just your small interaction with him, there's no doubt you... I mean, uh, there was no doubt that he'd been drinking. I mean, he, like I said, you'd water at blood size, you could smell it on his person. I didn't have any doubt about that. Um, as far as being able to make a DUI case off of it, it wasn't something that I would have felt comfortable with. Um, you know, different circumstances, of course, if I was on the road and had seen him drive and had other things to go along with it, maybe. Um, but at the time, you know, he wasn't, not to say that everybody we arrest is, you know, slurred speech, stumbling around, but there wasn't those obvious type of things. I didn't have any field sobriety to go off of, any driver man driving mannerisms, anything like that. So it was, you know, just the... You know, like I said, you know, be able to smell alcohol in his breath, water, and bloodshot eyes. When you when you said he was, well, the meter was evasive, but he was gave every medical possibility. What do you mean by that? You know, the typical questions that I start off asking is, do you have any problems with your feet, ankles, legs, knees, hips? Um, anything that affects your ability to balance or walk? I'll ask if they have any previous head injuries, any injuries to or problems with their eyes, um, take any type of medications, those type of things. And it was just like he was trying to come up with an answer, and I don't know his medical history. Um, but it was like he was trying to come up with an answer or an excuse for everything. Um, but I want to say he, he told me he was prior military, that he had either back or leg injuries. Um, but I, I can't remember what, what all he told me. But it was like he was trying to come up with something for every question that I asked. Um, but like I said, ultimately he wouldn't take Phil sobriety at all. So. Uh, and do, uh, he gave you a verbal no. Uh, yeah, that's our memory. Did you argue it? No, I mean, I didn't really, we didn't really give him a chance to be argumentative, to be honest with you. I just, I was there for uh, the DUI investigation side of it, um, so I wasn't his supervisor, I wasn't handling the administrative side, and nobody was really confrontational with him at all. Um, after I, I handled what I could, he didn't want to do anything. Um, Sergeant Lundy ended up opening up one of the buildings there at the mansion and having him go in there and sit down. And we just kind of, you know, kept an eye on him until they, uh, I think he ultimately left and took him for a, either a blood or breath test. Did anybody else from Nighthawks respond? Sergeant Gates did as well. Did he have any interaction with him or he did? He was around him, um, but I don't, I don't think he, I don't know that he ever even spoke to him. Is he working today? No, sir. He's he, off? He's off. He worked last night? No, sir. He worked uh, Friday night was last night. He worked. He was on sick pass Saturday. His, uh, I think his father-in-law was in pretty rough medical shape, so he was helping with that. I understand. Um, so when you was out there doing field sobriety, was it who, who all was around him? At the time, it was just me and Sergeant Lundy. I don't think uh, Sergeant Yates got there till after the fact. Okay. Corporal Gang. Did you smell any cologne? Cologne on it? Or any other odors other than the alcohol? Not that I call, recall. I mean, it was pretty distinct odor of alcohol. I don't remember anything else. Scale it from 1 to 10, 1 being 
not not being very strong, Tim being, you know, extremely strong, what would he fall on that scale? It, I mean, it was pretty strong. Like I said, I could smell it before I could even get close to him, as close as me and you are, so I six or seven. Okay. I mean, I couldn't make any estimate, estimation of impairment off of that, but it was a strong odor. Right. No doubt he'd had, he'd All been right. drinking. Right. You know it? No, sir. Outside first, of first time I've ever seen it. That I know of. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, only thing we say is it's an ongoing investigation, so please don't discuss this with anybody outside of uh, myself or Corporal uh, Morgan. Yes, um, outside of that, I'm going to conclude this interview. Uh, the time now is 9.39 a.m. and I conclude this interview. Today is Monday, February 28, 2022. The time now is 8.49 a.m. This interview is in reference to IA-0017-2022. Uh, my name is Sergeant First Class Todd Henson with the Officer, uh, Georgia State Patrol Officer Professional Standards. I'll be conducting this interview this morning. Also present from OPS is... Corporal Allen Morgan, OPS. And the employee being interviewed is TFC Johnny Kirk, badge number 978, currently assigned to the mansion. Um, TFC Kirk is being interviewed as a witness to the investigation. You're not the subject of the investigation. Uh, this investigation is an administrative investigation uh, involving a DPS employee showing up to work suspected of having alcohol on his breath. Um, before we get started, uh, Tipsy Kirk, if you to say and spell your name for voice recognition. Johnny Lenard Kirk. It's J O H N N Y K I R K. And uh, you do understand this interview is being audio and video recorded. Yes, sir, I do. Okay. Uh, in front of you, you have the Gary DeWarren. Um, have you had the opportunity to, to read that this morning? Yes, sir, I'm familiar with it. Do you understand it? Have any questions about it or anything like that? I have no questions. Okay. If you just go ahead and sign it for me. Today's the 28th, isn't it? Yes, sir. Um, can you just kind of tell me, uh, go back to the day in question, uh, TFC1, Adrian Haggard is the employee uh, that I understand that you smell uh, an odor of alcoholic beverage about his person? Yes. Um, just tell me uh, what, well first, uh, what shift was you working? I was on, the, my, my shift started at 09 that morning, 0900 hours that morning and I was scheduled to get off at um, 20 hundred hours that afternoon. You said 20? Yes, 8, 8 p.m. which is 11, 11 hour shift. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Keep going. And um, it was a Thursday afternoon um, around 7 p.m. Um, TFC Hager um, entered the uh, security office right there at the governor's mansion. Um, he immediately came through the door smiling. Um, as soon as he came through the door, I could smell alcohol on his person. Uh, he told me that he had been on four dates. Um, and he proceeded to, I was standing right there at the counter once he come in the room. He told me he had been on four dates today, big smile on his face. Um, I could smell the alcohol on his person. Um, he then uh, told me he had pictures of the dates that he had been with. So he pulled his cell phone out, showed me different women that he had previously been on date with that, during, during that day. Um, he did most of the talking. He told me that um, he had been to Del Frisco's Grill, uh, which is a was a bar slash steakhouse. Uh, he told me he had been there about an hour before he came to work. He said he had about two to three drinks. Um, and I could smell the alcohol on him. He, uh, his eyes were glossy, uh, glossy red. Um, I mean, he's very excited. Um, and he had texted me. He texted me about 5:36 that afternoon. He was supposed to be to work at seven. He texted me at 5:36 and asked me what time the supervisor got off. Sergeant Lundy. He texted on my phone. I mean, I still got a text. But it was exactly uh, 5.36, proud of him coming to work. 
Uh, he texted me and asked me what time Sergeant Lundy got off. And um, I texted him back at about 6.13. Um, hold on one second. Yeah, I texted him back at 17.56 and responded $2,200. That's what time the supervisor got off. Um, and then he texted me back at um, 18.13. He responded okay. Um, once um, getting back to the, to the um, security office, once I smelled the alcohol, he showed me the pictures, um, told me he had, had consumed about two to three drinks at the bar. Um, I knew the governor was coming in. Um, we, were, we were expecting him at least 30 minutes, you know, after, you know, seven or eight. So um, I called, I walked outside. I walked outside and called Sergeant Lundy. And I told Sergeant London, I said, look, I said, you might want to come down here to the security office. I said, Adrian's been drinking. I, I told him, I said, he told me he had been on four dates. I told him that he had a strong odor of alcohol coming from his breath. Um, and I told him, I said, you know, we got the governor coming. You might not want him in the security office. Um, so Sergeant Lundy immediately, um, I, I don't know what he did after that, but I'd say probably about 20 minutes after that, he got down there. I went on to the barracks, um, and after I got to the barracks, the captain called me, and you know I told the captain what happened. So the captain told me to suit back up and go back down. Okay, when I got back down there to the security office, uh, Hager had already got his portable, he had his alcohol sensor. I guess he was gonna check himself. He said he he had it to see what the uh, battery did. He was gonna charge it up. But I think he was going to check himself and see how much alcohol he had in his system. Because, I mean, you could smell it. Um, and at that point in time, I was down there in the security office. Um, Haggard and Sergeant Lundy walked out. They went outside. And I just sat there. Then they waiting on the Nighthawks. Um, and then, hold on one second. Yeah, at approximately 8, it was about 8.31, he called me. While he, uh, Hager, Hager called me while he was outside being interviewed by the Nighthawks. He called me. Um, and, you know, he told me what was going on out there. He asked me, did I smell alcohol on I said, yeah. So I smell it all over you. And then, so he asked me, what should he do? I told him, I said, just tell him the truth. You know, just tell him the truth. He was sitting in his car. I said, just tell him the truth, tell him what you told me. Mm -hmm. um, but apparently he didn't do that, so. Um, and that phone call took place about 8.31. Yeah, and that was the last time I talked to him while the Nighthawks were out there, were out there interviewing him. Okay. Um, he just, I guess he just wanted advice. So. All right, so um, when you say you observed alcohol. I mean, you smelled alcohol. How long have you been a DPS a trooper? I've been with the state patrol 23 years. So you've had the opportunity to arrest people and smell a little alcohol, yes. DUI yes. people. So yes. you've you been trained in DUI detection. Yes, sir, I have. As, so as far as what, what type of training? Um, signs and pad drivers. Um, just, just knowing what to see, what to look for, you know, as far as the eyes go, um, the attitude, uh, his, his physical movements and stuff like that, words he may say, um, and, and smell. I mean, I could smell it. Um, and his eyes were glossy. So, pretty much, I mean, I, I've seen it a thousand times. Okay. I've seen that, just that look, that smell. Of alcohol, so I knew what I was dealing with before he even said anything. But uh, the security office, how big is it? Is it close quarters? Yeah, it's very close quarters, about the size of this room. It's it's about twelve, probably about twelve by twelve when you first walk in there. Okay. The initial room itself. And as soon as he walked in, you immediately. Smell oh yeah, as soon as he walked in, I could smell it. I could smell it so. Um, and then he came all the way up to me, told me about his dates, opened his phone. I mean. The alcohol was just hit me in the face. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, that 
he texted you, was it on your personal phone or state? Yeah, it was on my personal phone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the text said um five thirty six. Well he wanted to know where Sergeant Money was at, what time he gets on. Why do you think he was asking you that? That's a good question. Um I, I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming he probably just didn't want to run into him more than he got to the mansion. I understand. So, um, was Harry going to be there by himself? Yes, he was going to be there by himself. So, and once, once, once he believed me, I would have left. And then Sergeant London would have left at ten o'clock. So, so he just been there by yeah, himself. Yeah, he was just been there by himself. So, all right. How long have you known? Him? I've known Hager. He and I worked at the Capitol together. Uh, we're both from South Georgia. But as far as a personal relationship, I met him at the Capitol, i say probably around 2018. I think he got to, well, I got to the Capitol in 2018. He got there about 2019. Three years? -ish. Yeah, about three years. I've been knowing him by person about three years. Uh, any known drinking problems that you've ever noticed from him? No. Nah. I, I mean, no. I'm not talking about an occasional weekend having, but problems. It, you, and I realize that's vague, but he. Um, any, I any mean, issues? you know, he. I talk to him a lot, you know, especially since when we were at the mansion. You know, he he would always talk about his dates and stuff like that. Um, he goes out. He goes to um, different countries a lot. But I mean, you know, he's just got a heavy presence of women. He's just he deals with a bunch of women. Um, and he talks about that. You ever notice anything like this from him before? As far as, as, far as alcohol, mm -hmm. no. I haven't worked like mm -hmm. No, but see what it, I think what he what he does, he puts a lot of cologne on to kind of mask the scent of the alcohol. I don't think this is the first time he's done it. Because he texts me after all this was over with, he texts me uh, at midnight and asks me, was it his cologne that I smelled? Uh, but I didn't respond to it. Um, he said, do you think that you and Sergeant Lundy smelled my cologne? And I, at that point, I didn't have anything else to say. So, so you never suspected any alcohol pro drinking problems? No, I, I never suspected any problems. You know, I know he, you know, I know he goes to the bar a lot. You know, he's always telling me how he's making drinks at his apartment and inviting women over. I mean, you know, as far as any personal problems, nah, never. So... Y'all get along? Yeah, we get along very well. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you like to add? Uh, that's about it. Um, like I say, he, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know what what it could have been that day. Um, but he he was definitely he was. You think he's under influence? Yeah, I I think he probably one oh five. I really do. Um, and he told me that he had he had just drank at least two to three alcoholic beverages before he got to work, about an hour before. So that would have been around 6 p.m., about 5, or either 5.30, which is the time that he texts me, wanting to know what the supervisor, what time the supervisor got on. What time was he scheduled to work that night? He was scheduled to be there at 7. 7 7? Yeah, 7 p. 7 a. He was a night shift guy. And like I said, he texts me, it's about, well, it was 5.36, he texts me. I don't know what Sergeant Lundy was at. I mean, that was the first time he ever did that, too. Um, he would always, you know, he, if he was going to be late, he would text and say, you know, I got a flat tire here. He was just one of those, I got a flat tire. I locked my keys out of my apartment. He would text me and say stuff like that if he knew he was going to be late. But that's the first time he ever texted me and asked what supervisor was at gotcha. and what time he got off. Uh, actually, I, I thought he was going to call in sick, you know. I didn't know he was going to show up like he did. Yeah. So... But that was about it. Did you see him drive his patrol car? No. Nah. Well, I saw him come through on the camera. I saw him driving on the camera. Yeah, when he come through the gate, I saw him. All right. Yeah, and he got out. I saw him get out the car, too, so. Okay. Because I was ready to get out of there. Yeah, I understand. All right. Please do not discuss. Okay. With anybody. Okay, if you have any questions or come across any other information, uh, okay. reach out to me or start an okay? Okay. Please okay. do not discuss. Um, anybody. that, uh, if you'll email me, can you do screenshots of that text message thread and then email me then that memo that you've written there, if you'll just email that to me. Um, so I have no further questions. I'm going to conclude this interview. The time now is 9.03 a.m. and that concludes this interview.